Good evening, everyone. Hi, everyone. I'm Rosie Gordon Wallace, the founder of Diaspora Vibe Cultural Arts Incubator and curator of the traveling exhibition Intersectionality Diaspora Art from the Creole City. My thanks to the Gan Center for African American Art and Culture. David Taylor, CEO, and Benita Buford, CFO, and the entire staff for organizing this open air conversation. To you all, sincere thanks for selecting us and joining us to hear the conversation of these two artists featured in the exhibition, Intersectionality, Diaspora Art from the Creole City, which is a bold multidisciplinary curatorial co collaboration and exploration of the emergence of the Creole city as a local, regional, and global phenomena. The exhibition explores the complex issues around race, identity politics, migration, gentrification, class, gender, and cultural transitions in the African-American and Afro-Caribbean communities, brown and black immigrant communities. These artists produce work intended to make us think. It can sometimes make us uncomfortable, but it provides searing commentary on the way the world operates and breaks down. These are the words from artist and friend Sanji Setai. Tonight's open air chat is going to be really exciting. And we have Monique Luck. Monique, are you going to join us? Monique is Charlotte based. She's an international artist and her soulful, soulful figures emerge in a really spontaneous and revealing colorful way. They, they tell lyrical stories and they move fluidly across the canvas. She models the features of figures and natural forms using fragments of found paper. As I assemble a collage, she says, I often wish I could rearrange pieces of my life as I do pieces of colored paper. She explains that each day I am reminded that life's choices are not as easily moved. Luck is an award-winning international artist and muralist. She has exhibited her work frequently at galleries and museums across the US. She has received artist scholarships and awards and honors, honor, and honors for her work as a muralist both locally and nationally. It is my pleasure to introduce you to Monique Luck. Hi, Rosie. Thank you for having me, everyone. Hi, Monique, how are you? I'm wonderful, thank you. I am going to now introduce us to our second artist and in featured in intersectionality. We're going to welcome Michael by reading his bio. Michael is an established, established an early interest in art making while growing up, which led him to his art school tenure in Kingston, Jamaica. He developed his love for painting while reinforcing his interest in photography and realized that the two can go hand in hand, painting and photography, as he pursued photorealism as a painting style. Social commentary became the base of Michael's pieces throughout the years, ranging from the political climate in Jamaica to even the COVID-19 pandemic. His most popular series to date and the largest body of his work is that of the Windrush series, which documents the plight of West Indians who immigrated to London in 1948 to rebuild the British Empire after the Second World War. May I please also add that they were invited to go to London. His preferred medium in painting is acrylic on canvas and the photography flows follow suit in its themed interpretations. Michael lives and works in Clarendon, Jamaica. Welcome, Michael. Thank you, Rosie. Thank you very much. I'm honored to be here. I am so happy to have both yourself and Monique um, on tonight. We both share the joy of um, looking at Monique's work at the entrance of the Harvey B. Gantt Center. And Monique, I want to, to 
share publicly how lovely it was to work with you at, at the Gantt Center. Um, you came diligently every day for the, the two weeks that we were there and I watched your process, but I want you to share it with the world. And we have the world at our footsteps with this Zoom. Can you share with me some information first about your background? Thank you so much, Rosie. It's been an honor to be part of this exhibition. It just, it's been a joy to work with you as well. Um, I'm so grateful for this opportunity. As far as my background goes, um, I am a self-taught artist and I, I come from a sense where I like to focus on community and, and having conversations with people. And, and when I have these types of conversations, it can be on different matters, but that's the most um, powerful inspiration for me when I create the artwork. So most of the, the pieces that you, you will see have a specific story behind them or a specific conversation that I've had or dialogue that I've had with either a community member or something that's been in, influential in my life. So I, I really, I speak, um, I try to work intuitively with emotions so and, and color so those are the things that you'll you'll see when you look at the artwork. And as and as we talk, Monique, we're going to be able to show some of the work that you're talking about, right? Folks on this Zoom, when you go to the Harvey B. Gant Center, as you enter the, the doors, Monique's work is to the left. Her mural, this is a commission piece that Monique did for the opening of intersectionality. It's not no little pia pia piece. This is a special piece that she did for the Gantt Center. And, and Monique, when, when what, we, what you and I envisioned was that people would come into the center, right? They would move to the left of the, of the um, lobby area and your work would almost direct them to the elevators, right? Remember, we had the challenges of the of the um, stairway. The what would you call that when folks are holding on to the the rail? Um, can you tell me when 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 we invited you to show the work? What ran through your mind? You know, you you knew then that I wanted you to talk about um, to bring the Caribbean in, to bring the water into the space, right? To bring the ocean into the space. And we had a conversation about that, but your work is all about the ocean. Why is that so? Well, Rosie, that's a wonderful question. Um, I've always been drawn to water and its emotional impact. And, you know, as human beings, we are made up mostly of water. And I feel like our emotional body is water. So, and I also feel like water holds all these memories and it holds life in our hands. So when you gave me this wonderful opportunity and challenge of, of working on the wall because <laughs> I was thinking I was doing something else and then that but I was I was up for the challenge and, and, and it really was nice because I have been so you know I have been working you know in, in close places and in my studio and I hadn't done a big large scale mural in a while so it was really physical and wonderful to get on the wall and to get the colors and to, and to think about how to draw people and, and how make them feel like they're flowing through and, and guiding them and floating into the space and encouraging them to move forward. So it was a wonderful, uh, wonderful experience and challenge, but I, I enjoyed it very much. Mani, can you share also that the wall is not a small wall? It was a, it's a huge wall, right? Yes. 10 feet by what? 10 feet by six feet? It um, it's probably a little bit bigger than that. So right. I went, yeah, a little bit bigger than that, but I want to say maybe, I, I forget now, 25 feet by the time, something like that. Okay. Um, so, okay, so this is the image, but the image is not necessarily showing you um, the full scale of it, but it's a good close-up detail of, of, part, of the, uh, part of the wall. Right, right. But uh, you know what I want to share as well, Monique? I want to share that for the first four days, and I may not be counting correctly, the wall remained empty. Remember, I would come down every day and look at the wall. Yeah. <laughs> I would say, what is Monique doing? And then you shared with me that the work takes place in the studio. And I understood then, I don't know if our guests can see, but I understood then that this mural is based on small pieces. Share with us 
your studio practice of how you build your collage, the metal that you place on the, on the actual painting. I want you to take us through that journey as much as you can with these images that we have here. Yes, so the, when I began as a muralist in the past, I was mostly painterly, but as I began working and practicing collage artwork, it was really important for me to be able to um, figure out a way to utilize the same techniques that I was doing before with a, with a collage onto a mural. So um, I had the opportunity to create another type of mural, a linear mural, and I utilized stencils. And I created the piece and created a stencil from it and I incorporated that. So from that, it's kind of grown into a way for me to give the effect of my pieces. Um, so I literally drew the artwork, um, created the stencil. And so I was working diligently <laughs> in my studio, like cutting and, and cutting it out and drawing and getting these pieces because I really want this effect um, to kind of convey the style that I'm, I'm utilizing, I'm using now. So it was definitely a process. And then I, I, it was very important for me to bring in the paper and bring in the metal elements. So when you see my um, work, I have it's multiple layers. And so I wanted to make sure that the mural conveyed that as well. And it's a little more abstract than necessarily some of my collages are, but I felt that was also important in the story of, of this particular piece and the space. I felt like it, it was the way um, to kind of share what was happening and, and what was my inspiration for that with the water theme. But um, also, thank you, Monique, because um, I don't, I'm not sure our screen is capturing just how beautiful this collage is on that major wall, uh, commissioned wall. And, you know, I'm just going to whisper, I'm not sure who is listening, but I wish that they would just keep it there, Monique. <laughs> forever right because <laughs> yeah. it's so beautiful do you have in your practice a spiritual lens that guides this this um outcome because um yeah so that's the question tell us please share with me because there is a lot of spirituality that i feel and felt when i was looking at the work well the, the story behind this piece specifically is it does come back to my journey with the community when I was working with them on the project Evocation, which is about loss. And I, I, got, I gathered anonymous notes and had this connection with community who, who would leave me memories and stories. And this specific story was called I Feel Forever in My Grasp. And it was a story of recovery and faith and I wanted to create an image um, that was inspired, that, that inspired me about that. And she was um, the woman, was a woman, because I teach her women, she was submerged in water and she was grasping for this like future unknown, but she had confidence. And I wanted, I wanted a way to incorporate that. So having that, when you see the artwork, you see the, the water, I feel like it does convey the emotion and it does have, have faith in it and it does look at or reminds us how we're we can be swept into unexpected paths and unexpected circumstances mm -hmm. but there is a hope for the future um and, and when i was trying to prompt you because when you and i spoke we talked about yamaja um in the spirituality the alternate spiritualities that uh, that is practiced in santeria and obia and voodoo um, around the caribbean uh, uh, are there any relationships with the with with the woman and the water? Is there any relationship to that kind of spirituality? Well, I feel like with with this female figure, and you'll see it in my work. You'll see a lot of female figures that have are mermaids, and they're surrounded by this um, myth and maybe natural force and healing power. So yes, in that sense, you will. I again, like I said, I feel that water is so life giving and. So even when you're dealing in this particular um, piece of art was a deal about grief and loss and overwhelming circumstances, there is this, you know, strength and faith in it. And um, so a lot of, so you'll see a lot of like mermaid type features in, in my artwork. The, the other thing, thank you, Monique. The other thing that I wanted to point to is your color palette. Remember when I saw the work and I said, Monique, look at that cobalt blue that you have been able to create. Um, it is a beautiful, 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 intense blue in, in the work. I just want to just 
bring that out to the audience as well. Um, you're talking about grief, we're talking about renewal, we're talking about loss, yet your colors don't embrace that. Your colors are hopeful and brilliant and inspiring. Um, who are some of your influences, Monique? Who are some of the artists that influence this, this outcome of your work? Uh, well, I would, I have to, of course, you know, I look when it comes to collage to Ramir Bearden, um, his work is so amazing and, and gorgeous and inspirational and I get lost in his art. It just, uh, it just carries me away. So that he's number one. And then also um, Paul Gauguin, you know, the, his beautiful colors. And I always, I always like to call myself, even when I was always, been, always been drawn to water. I always say I'm like an island girl. So I have that in my heart. You are, you are, stop, yeah. you are. <laughs> I'm an island girl for sure. So I'm so drawn to those, to those, um, those color palettes and I just, I can't stay away from them. Yeah. Um, the other thing I wanted to share, because I don't know if everyone heard you, you said you're self-taught and a lot of times there is this misinformation that, you know, we all need an MFA in order to be able to create. I totally disagree. But what I want you to share with us is as you as you continue to, to excel, what has your development been in your career? What are some of the key areas in your career that you want to share with us? Well, I have to say, you know, you have to go into it as a self-taught artist. You don't necessarily, um, I look at things in maybe in a different perspective. I, I literally create what I, what I form from community or what the bonds that I make with community and the conversations that I have and I'm inspired. And so I just take these risks and sometimes they work out and sometimes they don't work out. But I, but I feel like every single place I've been has led me to the next place and the next place. And I've learned from other artists and other people that I've met along the way that have, have helped me and guided me and given me wonderful uh, mentorship and counsel. And, and I'm just truly grateful for every opportunity I've had. I feel like I'm still growing. I don't know where the path is going to lead, but I'm, I'm enjoying the journey. Um, um, you, I, I'm going to share with our audience that you were selected to join intersectionality as a local artist in the Charlotte, um, North Carolina area. And when you and I spoke, I explained to you that for me, the, the fact that your work was gender-based, that you were hypersensitive on, on, not hypersensitive, that you were doing gendered work, focusing on the female body, focusing on the issues, that that was very important to me. How has your experience been now that you have seen the other 26 artists in the intersectionality? Um, have you, ha, what has that experience been for you? Looking at your work, looking at their work, um, and you're there, you know, you're in a very enviable position because we can't see the work. Um, what has that experience been for you now that you've been able to go back more than once? I, it's such, I feel like it's hit me on different levels, just seeing the, you know, you see it on a surface at first, but then when you really take the time to look at the different pieces and the different um, installations, it just hits you on a different level powerfully. And I, I feel like, it's such an honor to be amongst such amazing artists. And so are you, Monique. So are you. Well, I have to jump in. Well, thank you. Well, thank so you, Rosie. Are you deservingly so. Deservingly well, so. Yeah. Well, thank you. But I, I just is inspiring. It was very inspiring for me to to spend time um, in the exhibition, and I I'm really grateful, like I said, to be part of it. Thank you, Monique. I'm gonna see if Michael has any pearls to share with us. Hi, Michael. Hi, how are you? <laughs> I'm, I'm wonderful, thank you. Um, thank you for joining us from that wonderful little rock called Jamaica. Oh, no. <laughs> um, Michael, I'm very familiar with your work and um, I'm, I'm going to acknowledge the art piece you have behind you. Monique has her work behind her and you have another piece behind you. So I just want to acknowledge that before we go into the work that was selected for intersectionality. Um, tell us a little bit about how you got involved in documenting, Michael, this horrific, awful, oh. you know, braggadocious, <laughs> terrible <laughs> incident. Um, 
tell us a little bit about how you got into that. Okay, I mean, I could have so many adjectives to describe that, but um, in, in 2018, mm -hmm. well, first of all, I should say DVCAI, thanks, thanks to you and your team, <laughs> had invited me to a residency in Miami um, for, for a month. Mm -hmm. um, I think it was July. The, yeah, July 2018. And at the time, I didn't really quite pin down what I was going to do on this residency in terms of a body of work. Mm -hmm. And what came out that year before I left for Miami was um, articles and news reports of, of, of this pressure cooker that had blown up called the Winner Scandal involving the Home Office. Um, in, in, in Britain that was, was responsible for the, the deportation and the um, incarceration of, of many British West Indians um, wrongfully. And, um, and when I read through in detail, I said, this, this is a so horrific, it just reminds me of the colonial past all over again. And it was so Michael, powerful. I have to stop you a little. Sorry, Michael. You said colonial past. Is that what you said? Because <laughs> no, sometimes when, he does it right in the middle of it. You know? we're, 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 <laughs> yeah. No, sorry, Michael. Continue. Please continue. I, I, I just had to, to break you with that one. <laughs> you know? still, still in the middle. Well, I, I was referring to, to, to yeah. times of slavery. Um, yeah. but, but, you know, um, so I came to Miami and I thought to myself, how could I represent this scandal um, in painting? Yeah. Uh, I was looking through different photographs of in the history and reading on the, on, on the Windrush. And the first thing I noticed was that the ship of the Windrush, there's a famous photograph of the back of the ship. Do you have that, an image of that that we can see, Michael? Is there an image that we can see that shows that? Yes, I do. Okay. Um, so, so, okay, the image is coming up now. Okay, this, so this is the first piece that I did called Storm in a Teacup um, on a residency. And I noticed at the back of the ship, it looked in the shape of a teacup. And Throughout the series, I, I used a theme, I decided to use a theme of tea because tea is something in Britain that is, that is suggestive of family and welcoming and, and, um, and brotherhood. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so I, I, I wanted to depict it, not, not in just its this natural display, but, but to, to, to corrupt the, se the scenario yeah. a yeah. little more. Than it's presented in and 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 being being turbulent about it. Yeah. Um, so in Storm and Teacup, you can see here where the ship is on this sort of wavy sea, mm -hmm. like it's tipping over and it's leaking, and there's there's a lot of um uh, uh precipitous sky in the background. Yeah. Um sort of represent this journey, and of course they're crossing water, so you know, um have that commonality there with um, Monique. Um. Right. Yeah, just that her ocean has a little bit prettier story than yours in this course. Prettier cup. story. <laughs> with, yes. with more color. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. But it's the same, it's the same turbulence. It's the same, um, you know, Monique talks about um, women having to reinvent themselves and go through issues. Michael, in the cup, uh, at the top of the cup, are those people at the top of the ship um, looking like they're trying to decide whether they're going to jump off or stay? Is that it? Well, they're actually people celebrating the journey. Oh, celebrating the journey. They're, they're, yeah. They believe that they're on this new opportunity to go to Britain because time, um, you know, Brit Britain, Britain wanted um, me, um, um, Commonwealth states to, to send um, workers over because they were shorthanded after World War II in terms of the rebuilding. Right. So, um, so, so they, they invited um, uh, 
people in the Caribbean um, to be over in Britain to, you know, different, different people in, from different trades. So mm -hmm. you'd have us and plumbers and engineers and, and so on. Um, so persons took up this, this offer in, in, in that, and in return, they, we were hoping that they would get a new opportunity in, in um, jobs, education, healthcare, and it can bring up, you know, the, the children. So they were, right. So they were promised all of this, not to, not to know that, not to recognize that they were going to be meted out with all this racism and, um, and, and um, disenfranchisement mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, that, that they went through, through, through the decades that, that came after. Um, so, so Michael, this 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 um, your work. We talk about photorealism and um, a little bit about your process. You're a painter. I mean, you graduated from Edna Manley School of the Performing and Visual Arts in Kingston, right. Jamaica. You 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 have traveled widely. Um, why the interest in? Why do you think that there is this duality of the interest between? You are a photographer and you're a painter and the work is, has this photorealism lens. Is there, can you say what led you to that? Or, you know, did it come because you used to draw as a child? What, share with us how this particular genre became attractive to you. It, you know, it's a little bit of both. It, I mean, yes, it stems from my, my drawing. I've, I've, always, I've always been um, attracted to, to, to texture and depth right. and how and pull people in. I, in my work, I want I want people to feel that they can walk into the piece and stand in there and pick up the hot cup that you're seeing right there and um and and really engage and play with it. Um, uh, yes, photography has has really shaped what I what I what I do in painting because um, especially um, in the years after graduating from Edna Manley. Um, you know, I've, I've, I've always been developing my technique in that it, it, it didn't always look like this, I can tell you. I mean, there, there are things that I really had to learn how to paint as I, as I go along, you know, in techniques of the brush and stuff and material. Um, well, we have Brixton Brewing in front of us. <laughs> I know. I'm, again, I'm, I was just waiting for you to, right. to finish that thought. Um, yeah. th this piece, tell us about this piece. I love the gold, um, the gold leafing of it. Um, tell us a little bit about Brixton Brewing. Okay, Brixton, Brixton Brewing um, came about when I, into my research, I. Uh, when I came back from the residency um, in, in Florida, I was doing further research and I read about, I'm just seeing image from Brixton, mm. which was happened in 1981. There was a riot to the West Indian community that were, they were um, rioting against police brutality and suppression um, of, of different types. And it came to a fever pitch and so since I was there, since I'm using my tea series, um, tea uh, symbolism, right? I say, what could I use to to represent this 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 hot topic? No pun intended. Right. Um, <laughs> so I really wanted to blow the lid off the pressure cooker in this one. So yeah, yeah. So which is why I have this explosion of of anger coming out of the cup and, and you know, the cup is about to give with all the cracks yeah. <clears throat> and, and, and the soot and everything. Um, <clears throat> and the detailing, Michael, of um, the crown and the, the um, soldier-like positioning of the images and at the, the circumference of the cup, um, yeah. a lot of detail. And then I also want to point to the color blue. You know, we, we in the arts community, color is a really important part of how we describe work. Um, and in England, the teacups that are really expensive have two colors, the gold and the blue. 
Were you right. referencing that because of your how we're looking at it from the Caribbean to England, or tell me why it is other than a, a, a British a British stamping? You um, are you utilizing those colors because there's a similarity with the color in your work and also in Monique's work. Right. Um, with the color, the color for me in this in this case, because not all the teacups in the in in the series, I I have this blue royal blue going on, but the 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 blue for me in this case represents the the the, the royalty and the and the sort of 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 elite, and and it speaks to identity as well because right. class because, and class right. because you because you you um the crown has invited have invited um british caribbean cit citizens mm -hmm. right to britain to help the motherland quote unquote um <laughs> um rebuild and it it's like we have one foot in the door one foot out and you know at, at any point they can cast us out when they finish with us right um, so you know, it's what 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 are we to you? Right. We're on your cup. We're on your cup, surrounding it, but we're not we're not really right. we're not really a part of you. Um, and and I and I keep putting the crown that you see there, that logo. Yes. Through series, it's and it has HMT below mm -hmm. it, which is um Her Majesty's Treasury, which which is the Home Office responsible for ushering in the Windrush ship in the first place. I, I, so. I you know, the, the Windrush story landed here in the United States later than it did, of course, in the Caribbean. And right. when you were here for your residency, when we talked about it, I don't think there was one person in the room that had heard about it. So um, right. what have you, what have you been up to since you have done this series? And did you have any more images you wanted to share with us? Um, there's another one here called a drop. Um, oh, by the way, Brixton Brewing is, it's showing at, at, at the Gant currently. Um, <laughs> Thank but those you, Michael. Are, yes. Um, and so is a drop here. Um, the drop, uh, this one, this one, as you can see, features tea bags. Of yes. course, it's a tea series. Um, so what I have here is tea bags falling to the bottom of the ocean. And what this piece represents is World War II veterans from the West Indies who fought in World War II for, for, for Britain that what was left unrecognized after the war. And, and many of them came across on the Windrush ship to help Britain rebuild. Also, so Michael, um, these are like sorry to talk over you, but these are like um, um, what you call them again when soldiers have their tags, you know, the, dog the, tags. the there, there you go. Um, yeah. these are dog tags as well. Is that what this represents? It, these are dog tags, yeah, right. because right. The dog tags are circular as opposed to the American dog tags, which are the um, the square, square metal. And silver, right, right, right. And Michael, are any of these works of art that you have um, in anyone's collection? Um, this is a specific series that you've done on Windrush. Um, do you have any collectors that have um, been attracted yes. to the work? I have. I have um, there are several collectors um, in the States and, and locally in Jamaica um, that, that have these works. Um, the drop is still available. Um, oh, the drop is still available. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, Monique, are you there? Because I, I mean, when I say, are you there? I know you're there. I wanted to to um, to ask Michael if Michael, do you have a question for for Monique? You have not been able to see the work at the Gant Center, but I can tell you that the mm. real estate that you have is is um, significant, and you have three pieces in the in the um, in the exhibition. Monique has a lot of real estate. Her, her, her wall is large. Um, is there a way, Monique? Uh, Monique, is there a way? Do you have a question that you want to share with Michael around your experience? You, you have been there. You have done your, your, um, your mural. 
you have seen Michael's work. Um, do you have a question for Michael? And Michael, do you have a question for Monique? Well, Michael, uh, first of all, your work is stunning. I love it. Um, the the stories, the, the stories behind it are are really impactful and meaningful. So I I'm drawn to your water, of course. That's my my thing too. So I <laughs> I love I love your choice of color. So for the one the one piece where it's it's floating um, and the tea is kind of coming out and then the tea, the, the water, the ocean color. Um, is there a, a choice of color that you, the reason you chose that specific color for the water? Um, well, what I, what I wanted to, to depict in, in the first image, I, I believe that's the one you're referring to. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, I, I, I wanted to, of course, that's, that's one of the colors of tea as well, right. but I want to also represent blood. Mm -hmm. that we shed a lot of blood for Britain, you know, o over, over many decades, over, over centuries. And, um, and, and so it was important that for me that the water is not a serene situation, that it's, it's murky, it's hard to navigate, um, and it's, it's full of tension. <laughs> but you know, Michael, late blood, um, going way back now to my science head, late blood is brown. It's not red. It's not bright red. When, you, when, right. when, the, when the cells break down, the color you get is brown. And so brown. to Monique's question, the, the reason that the water looks almost like a, a muddy um, outcome, almost like it would be water in a river, as opposed to what Monique is showing from the ocean, that beautiful turquoise color. It's because right. you're, you're referencing blood and blood, blood and hardship. Um, right. I don't think we have to all bleed to, to talk about hardship. We don't wanna have to talk about hardship in, in just in terms of blood. And right. we acknowledge all the lives of young men that have been killed, especially in this past year. Um, right. Not young men alone, women as well. And, and, and other gendered folks that have been killed. So we, we, the symbology and the hardship between um, folks that left the Caribbean to go and serve England is really powerful. But I see also the struggle in Monique's work of, of the female gendered body. Right. When you look at her, her mural, the, 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 the shin of the woman is, is bob, sort of just bouncing on top of the water. You're not sure if she can swim. I asked Monique, I said, Monique, can this woman swim? I mean, I was joking mm -hmm. when she was actually doing it because I said, although it's beautiful, there is, there is a, a, a struggle between life and death. I mean, if right. you can't swim and you're in deep water, you, 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 you're gonna end up at the bottom of the, of the ocean. So. And she said to me, it is about the, the resilience and the survival. So Monique, that is what I see in both of you, that the, the, the work is physically beautiful. The work is pleasing to the eye, but if you stop and ponder and look at the work, what you see is what Michael is talking about and what you're speaking about, the tension, the pull, the, the pain, even, even with the beautiful colors that you're both using. Um, um, you know, one of my favorite things is to ask about me mentorship. And you and I, Michael and Monique, know that we can't get through life without mentors. So right. can you share with me in either of your lives who it is that has been a mentor for you, even if you don't want to call the person's name, but have you had a mentor that has guided you through this career, this artistic high tide and low tide career that we have um, as artists? Yeah, yes. <laughs> Michael, do you wanna go first or I, I can speak? I, I'll go first. <laughs> I'll let you go first. Okay, okay, thank you. Well, um, I, you know, it's interesting. I feel like I've had a, a different mentors throughout my journey and um, I can think of at least two that were very pivotal for me. And I had one when I started my career in Pittsburgh, she, she guided me and helped me. And I was able to also mentor with um, 
someone who introduced me to the mural work and that's where I got my start and when I learned about it and it really was so pivotal for me when I started um, working more in murals and then later on as I moved um, moved away and started moving into more um, a different type of work there was another artist who has since passed away but has been so pivotal I remember he just really helped me and and gave me wonderful suggestions and wonderful um, ideas and just really encouraged me to continue to follow the path that I was going on and, and it gave me the um, it gave me the courage to keep going and I and those those two I, I can say I, I don't think I would be where I would be if it wasn't for them. They gave you courage and confidence because you're yeah. really, you're really confident Monique. Um, I, I admire that with working with you in um, in Charlotte and um, I hope that the community in Charlotte will take the opportunity to to look at the work and to give you the, the accolades that you deserve because uh, the, the work is really beautiful. And I know it was a difficult task, I'm winking, to ask you <laughs> to do that mural in such a short time and I'm full of appreciation. Michael, a mentor, yeah. mentors for you during your sure. career. Sure. Um, well, I have a, have a, I have a few. Um, no, but I take oh. all night, okay? Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I must big up, big up my, my brethren for a long time, Christopher Lawrence. Um, he went to Edna same time that I did. Yeah. Uh, um, he, I think he, he was a couple of years ahead of me. But um, after leaving art school, we became really good friends and um he he also helped us to, to sort of shape the the direction of how you know how 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 my my, my technical devices are in terms of my work mm -hmm. and how i look at the work in terms of a global scale um context and and um Another another person, um, I know Prudence Lovell and Donnet Zaka from art school days. Mm -hmm. um, Cecil Cooper too. Right. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah. You have mentored me also. You know, guys, we have studio visits. I almost forgot. I mean, woo. <laughs> so um, who is going to go first? I think Monique, are you uh, studio walkthrough with Michael? Michael, you want to just take us through your studio? Um, since sure. you're the last to speak. All right, let me, let me, okay, everybody seeing? Yes, we're seeing. All right, all right. Okay, this is a work in progress. Um, I haven't titled it yet. Um, so I've been working on a series of, um, Watermelons. This is like the second one that I'm working on now, and it's a, a, a much bigger one to the first one. Um, so what, what this represents, this work represents, is a sort of continuation of social, social justice work. You know, I've, I've been doing Windrush for the past two years, but I want to expand also into um, slavery um, in America. Mm -hmm. and uh, and and how black people are seen culturally and the cultural nuances that are attached to us mm -hmm. so um this this piece of watermelon um represents like a slave ship like a galleon and you can see where the seeds are mm -hmm. are actually people yep. uh, yeah I haven't, I haven't really finished um some of them um so wow let me show you okay this one this one was the first one that i that i did which was a much smaller one i'm just showing you on the um computer screen and that i call it passage garden um you can see, see what are those this. at the bottom michael um figures i, I couldn't yeah, they, those are kids that have fallen out of the, of out the, of the okay so the, the, the slaves that have fallen out of right. the watermelon wow Wow. Wow. Well, this one, this one was a long time piece I did back in 2013. I saw, I saw a, a skull um, below 
below Paris, subterranean Paris. Mm -hmm. um, and I was, it, there, was, there was a period of time when I was drawn to painting um, a series of skulls and I call this one man, Mankind. Mm. Um, so, okay, this one, this one I call Fence. And this is part of my COVID series. And I, as you can see, it's a zinc fence here. And zinc fence is very, it's a, it's a very symbolic thing of, you know, the, the ghetto in, in Jamaica. Mm -hmm. but, but more importantly, a rusty zinc fence is something that doesn't really hold very well. And I wanted to start to represent the vulnerabilities that we have um, during COVID and uh, how not following the rules and stuff can, can, can really make or break uh, a society. So this pandemic has, has made me do things. Right. So, um, wow. yeah. Okay. Thank you, Michael. The, 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 that mask is troubling, wow. <laughs> Monique, um, while we we are here and with um, we're running out of time, and I'm so sorry about that because I could stay here all evening with both of you. Can you take us through your studio so we can see what you're working on presently? Okay, sure. So this is one of the pieces I'm working on. It's wow. kind of, it's kind of a good way to see the work before, while it's in progress. Um, yeah. It's going to be two girls in water, of course, and um, I'm just uh, the pieces are uh, just hand painted paper, and and it I, it takes a long time to get the um, collage in there, but it's going to be very. I'm excited about it. It's going to be into my my new show coming up. That's into memory. And then I have some other works happening here. Here's an older piece, but um, a really special piece. This is um, called All I Dream is All I Dream of Home. And it's about my family. And if you get close in this tree collage, you'll see images of family. Faces, children, older pe older, older faces, yes. older yes. portraits. Yes. And Almost it's, as if they're voyeurs looking, you know, they, it's a voyeuristic mm -hmm. look, you know? Yes. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yes. And so I'll take you around. Don't want to get you dizzy here. Just moving around here. Hold on. Um, this is my ocean of dreams. Yes. And again, it, it continues with the, the idea of the struggle. Um, I, the, my women are often, as you noticed, half in and half out of the water. And it's a choice that they have to make. Will they, um, will they move forward? Will they make that choice of life? And, um, and it's a contemplative piece. So this is the ocean of dreams. And then finally behind me, this is another piece that's still a work in progress, but it's oh, just- the some colors are beautiful, Monique. That, that turquoise you. blue and, and that cobalt blue, they're really beautiful. Is there an image in the middle here? Is that a body of water in the middle? Yes, she's, this is a very, there's a, there is a female in here. And as again, this is a work in progress. She's not quite there. You can kind of see her face right, coming right. forward there. Yeah. But yeah, so um, this is again, one of the pieces in my Into Memory um, exhibition coming up. So I'm Please looking- Please tell us for, a little bit about the, where the, where the exhibition will be held. Um, it's called Into Memory. Where is it being held? Um, this is going to be held at CPCC, Ross Galleries, the Overcash Galleries, um, and I'm, it's going to be January 11th through March 11th. Oh, and, wow. it's, and again, it's um, based on this, the idea of loss and, and moving forward in a beautiful, in a beautiful way, but, but thinking about the things that we've gone through and what we're, we're, we're overcoming despite um, the challenges, there's still beauty there. So oh. I'm excited, I'm excited to share with everyone. Congratulations. Are you represented by a gallery, Monique? Are you being represented by a gallery? Um, oh, sorry. Currently, I, uh, there, good. Um, in, in Charlotte, I, the Harvey Gantt Center has my work mm -hmm. on the museum store. So I'm grateful for them to have me, so. And we're grateful to have you. 
Um, I, I'm hoping that we can take a few questions. I'm um, looking at the time, it's, it's 7.51. My team, are we, Monique, are the women, Monique, who are the women in your series is one of the questions here. Um, yes, so the women in my series are often women I know. Um, I've used my sisters, I've used my, my family, my close friends. Um, Everyone is someone that I know, so um, it's an, it's a special um, connection for me, and I and I incorporate their story in it as well. For both of you, the, the other question is: How is the creation process um, therapeutic to you both? Mm. Or I should, is it therapeutic to you? You know. Yeah. Um. For me. For me. Uh. Painting the wind, um, the with read the wind rush. Um, it it has been a bit of both. I, I, I feel I feel angry sometimes mm -hmm. when I have to paint these issues because you have to keep thinking about them. Mm -hmm. But then there are elements that 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 make me feel hopeful, and the fact that I can share the story can open a conversation right. with people. Um, because it's not a very, it's, you know, it, it's, an, it's a known story in Jamaica, but it's, I, I don't find that it's a very active conversation among many circles. I agree. Um, Michael, yeah. can you, is it, it pos, is it possible to put in the chat um, a link where folks can learn more about the Windrush, um, Windrush disaster, the Windrush ambush? Because, okay. <laughs> you know, this is, it, can you put a link there? Um, sure. And Monique, someone is asking, what are the titles of your works from the slideshow? Um, and Michael, where is your work displayed? So Monique, can you put the titles of the work in the chat for me, please? So okay. that we can honor the time. And Michael, where is your work displayed? Are you represented by a gallery in Jamaica? Um, I'm I'm not represented by a gallery um, officially. Um, well, oh, I was just singing the thing in that in that chat. Um, yeah. Um, I have I have my my website. I just put in the link. Um, yeah. yeah. Um, um, but I but I um. But I have a close relationship with DVCAI. Who is um, that? Who is DVCAI? <laughs> <laughs> you heard we have Here to ahead. have some fun. Yeah. <laughs> spirit, ahead, spirit, by, yeah. Spirit by by um by you, Rosie Garden Wallace. And um and I'm and I'm so grateful for the opportunity um over the years. Um and yeah, and I would like to thank um the Harvey B. Gantt Center for hosting my work and um, you know, mounting it very beautifully. Yeah. Yeah. It, it has been a really wonderful experience. Um, Monique, we would love to continue working with you. I'm trying to figure out ways that we can get um, you to, to do work. It, it's, it's a desire of mine. And I told you that when we met at the Harvey B. Gantt Center, I, I love your process. I love the fact that you go to your studio, you create your, 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 your collage pieces, you formulate them and then you come and make the magic happen. Um, the installation and purposeful manipulation of the wire pieces was very important to me to watch. And so um, Charlotte, North Carolina, she's your home girl. I mean, she is from your space and we just wanna thank you both for being there. Um, Michael, Elliot, um, where are you are in Jamaica again, Michael? Clarendon, uh, Jamaica. Clarendon, near Clarendon, to Clarendon, Jamaica. Thank you so very much. Monique yeah. Luck, thank you very much from Charlotte, North Carolina. Yeah, um, it has been really wonderful to interview you both. Um, and I know both all of us has, have had a really tough time in this pandemic. Go forth and continue to create. Thank you so much. Thank you, Rosie. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. All right.
Thank you all for sharing this conversation with us. Um, I don't know about how you all feel, but I had an amazing time talking to, to Monique Locke and Michael Elliott. It is important that we deepen our understanding of these artists' experiences to build a greater knowledge of the true power of their work. The Gan Center has been a great platform in bringing programs to the community that highlight the intersection of arts and culture. With your support, the Gan Center can expand the work they do and provide even more experiences to the community. By texting the word unmasked to the number 345 345, you can conveniently and generously support the continuation of such programs and initiatives. To learn more about the ways that you can support the Gantt Center, visit the website gantcenter.org. Stay tuned next year, January 12th at seven o'clock Eastern Standard for a special open air conversation with multidisciplinary artist Asir St. Val from Haiti and Francophone scholar Alex Pierre, Dr. Alex Pierre, with myself as your host, as we dive deeper into the Gantt Center's, Center's featured exhibition, Intersectionality, Diaspora Art from the Creole City. Happy holidays, folks. Thank you and good night.